Hi everyone, I'm Mr. Longgun, your friendly guide to the world of Web3. Today, we're going to take an in-depth look at what Web3 is, how it's different from Web2, and why it matters for the future of the internet. So, let's start with a brief overview of the current state of the internet, or what's known as Web2. In the early days of the internet, it was a decentralized network where users could freely exchange information. But as the internet grew, centralized platforms and tech giants emerged, becoming the gatekeepers of our online lives. This has led to numerous issues around data privacy, the spread of misinformation, and the control of our online identities. That's where Web3 comes in. It's the next generation of the internet, designed to address these problems by putting users back in control of their digital lives. It's built on decentralized technologies, like blockchain and peer-to-peer -peer networks, that eliminate the need for intermediaries like tech giants or governments. One of the key features of Web3 is that it allows users to own and control their personal data. This is achieved through the use of decentralized identity protocols, where users have the power to store, manage, and share their data in a secure and transparent way. Another important aspect of Web3 is its focus on creating a more equitable and secure environment. With Web3, we're moving away from the centralized, permission systems that currently dominate the internet, to decentralized, permissionless networks. This means that users are not dependent on centralized organizations to access services and applications, and that developers have more freedom to create and innovate without restrictions. Now, let's talk about the applications and services that will be built on top of this new Web3 infrastructure. From decentralized finance, to gaming, to social media, the possibilities are endless. Decentralized finance, for example, enables users to access financial services without the need for traditional intermediaries like banks. This creates a more inclusive and accessible financial system, where anyone with an internet connection can participate. Web3 is also set to revolutionize the gaming industry, by enabling players to own and trade virtual assets, and by allowing developers to build games on open, decentralized platforms. This creates a more equitable and transparent gaming ecosystem, where players can have full control over their virtual assets and where developers have more freedom to innovate. Finally, let's talk about the social media aspect of Web3. Traditional social media platforms have come under fire for their handling of user data, the spread of misinformation, and the control of online identities. With Web3, we have the opportunity to create a new kind of social media, where users have more control over their data and online identities, and verified through decentralized networks. In conclusion, Web3 is the future of the internet, a more secure and equitable environment, where users have the power to own their online identity and protect their data. It opens up exciting new possibilities for how we interact with technology and with each other online. That's it for today's in-depth look at Web3. I hope you now have a better understanding of what this new era of the internet is all about. If you have any questions or would like to learn more, feel free to reach out. Thank you for joining me, and I'll see you again soon.